All right, so we're diving into something kind of personal today. Oh, yeah? Literally. Mm. We're talking about LASIK surgery. Ah. Uh, that procedure right. that's supposed to get you free from glasses and contacts. Right. So to get us started, for anyone who maybe needs a refresher, mm -hmm. what exactly is LASIK doing to our eyes? Well, it's not just about like the image you see, you know, it's right. about actually reshaping your cornea, yeah. that clear front part of your eye. Uh -huh. So LASIK uses a laser to permanently change how light is focusing on your retina. Okay, so it's actually like physically changing the shape of your eye. Yeah. I see. I see. Pretty wild. That makes sense. But like there are different types of LASIK, right? Yeah. I've right. never seen something about flaps. You're right. There are a few different methods. Okay. There's LASIK. PRK and smile. Okay. The main difference I think that people worry about is the flap. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Traditional ESIC involves like creating a flap in the cornea. Oh, wow. Lifting it to reshape the tissue underneath and then putting it back. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. PRK and smile avoid the flap. Gotcha. Which, you know, can be a big factor in someone's comfort level. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds kind of. Yeah. It's a little freaky. Yeah. So flap or no flap, that's one big thing to consider. Yeah. But before we even get to those choices, like, how do we even know if we're even in the running for LASIK? You know, eye health is like the top priority. Makes sense. Things like keratoconus. Okay. Any kind of eye inflammation or infection. Okay. Dry eyes. Mm hmm Large pupils, glaucoma, cataracts. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, all of these could mean LASIK is too risky. Wait, so dry eyes are like a deal breaker? It could be. Why is that? Because LASIK can actually make dry eyes worse. What? Really? Because the procedure sometimes messes with your tear production, at least temporarily, and for some people that dryness can be a long-term problem. See, that's something I would never have even thought of. Yeah. So it's not just about like having the right kind of vision problem you're trying to fix. Right. It's about your eyes just being healthy in general. Exactly. And it's not just about your eyes either. Okay. Like your general health matters a lot. Oh, okay. Autoimmune diseases, diabetes, mm -hmm. anything that could like affect healing. Yeah. Those all need to be discussed with your doctor before considering LASIK. Really makes you realize it's a pretty involved decision. It is. What else should we be thinking about? Well, stable vision is a must. Okay. If your prescription is still changing, like it often does for younger people, yeah. LASIK is off the table until things settle down. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because otherwise you could get the procedure and then your vision could change again anyway. Exactly. It wouldn't make much sense. Totally. Yeah. And I guess like age and lifestyle play a part too, right? Yeah, for sure. Like are you an athlete or in a job where eye injuries are a risk? Right. Those are things that might make LASIK less suitable. Okay. So lots to consider even before we think about like which type of LASIK might be best. Yeah. But let's be honest, like even if you tick all the boxes, mm -hmm. LASIK isn't some magical fix for everyone, is it? It's true. It's important to have like realistic expectations. Right. While a lot of people get 2020 or better after LASIK, it's not a guarantee. And I've heard that some people still end up needing glasses especially as they get older. That's right, like especially for things like night driving or reading. What? Glasses might still be necessary, and while complications are rare, they are possible. Okay, so what kind of complications are we talking about? Like what do people need to be aware of? Well, dry eyes, as we mentioned, is one of the most common. Mm -hmm. And while it usually clears up, it, it can linger for some right. other possibilities are things like glare, halos, even double vision. And then there's the flap issue we talked about earlier. Yeah, when you say flap issue, what does that even mean? So in those procedures where they create a flap, mm, okay. you could have inflammation, okay. folds in the flap, or even like abnormal tissue growth. Oh, gosh. And of course, like with any surgery, there's a slight risk of infection. Oh, man. Okay. That's a lot to digest. Yeah. Definitely makes you think twice about the whole thing. Uh-huh. And there's one more big factor that I think often gets overlooked. What's that? The cost. Ah, uh, yes, the elephant in the room. Right. It's not exactly cheap. No, not at all. And because it's usually considered elective, right. most insurance plans won't cover it. Oh, that makes sense. So you're likely looking at paying out of pocket. Yeah. Which is a significant expense for a lot of people. Definitely something to research carefully based on your own insurance and, you know, and budget. For sure. Now, there are also some interesting things about LASIK that might surprise you, even oh. if you've been wearing glasses or contacts for years. Oh. Mm. I'm intrigued. What kind of surprises are we talking about? Let's talk about nearsightedness. 
You know, when you can see things up close but struggle with distance. Oh yeah, been there, done that. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Being nearsighted can actually be an advantage as you get older. Wait, are you serious? How does that work? So as we age, we naturally start having trouble focusing on things up close. Right. That's called presbyopia. Presbyopia. Right. Okay, it's why so many people end up needing reading glasses. Yeah. But guess what? Nearsightedness can actually offset that. What? So it's like my nearsightedness is like a built-in reading glasses subscription. Exactly, and OLASIK cancels it. Oh my gosh. It's a trade-off to think about. Wow. LASIK might free you from those distance glasses now. Right. But you'll likely need reading glasses sooner than you would have otherwise. That's crazy. I never would have considered that. Yeah, it's wild. It really highlights how LASIK isn't just about fixing like one problem. Right. It's about understanding this bigger picture hmm. of how our vision changes over time. Exactly. That's fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so what about for people who wear contacts? Well, if you wear contacts, you'll need to ditch those for a good few weeks before LASIK. Weeks? Wow, why so long? So contacts actually change the shape of your cornea. Oh, right. Even if it's just slightly grina, your surgeon needs your cornea to be back to its natural state. I see. To get accurate measurements for the procedure. Okay, so no cheating with contacts, even for a day. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So once you've like weighed all these factors right. and you're like seriously considering LASIK, mm -hmm. the next big step is finding the right surgeon. Huge. Yeah. This isn't something you want to just trust to anyone. Definitely. So where we even start? Talking to your regular eye doctor is a good place to begin. Okay. They might have recommendations or know someone who specializes in LASIK. Or what about like asking friends or family who've had good experiences with LASIK? Absolutely. Personal referrals can be super valuable. Yeah, for sure. Just remember, you're not just choosing a clinic. Right. You're choosing a surgeon. Yeah. The person who will actually be evaluating your eyes, yeah. performing the procedure and handling your aftercare. Yeah. Okay. So really do your research and find someone you trust. Exactly. It sounds like finding the right surgeon is as important as the procedure itself. Couldn't agree more. So we've covered a lot of ground here, you know, eye health, general health, potential downsides. Yeah. Even how nearsightedness can be a weird advantage later on in life. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. But I feel like we've just scratched the surface of this whole LASIK journey. We have. There's still so much more to uncover. I know. Especially when it comes to those long-term outcomes and, like, managing those all-important expectations. Well, stay tuned because in part two of this deep dive, yes. we'll unpack even more about LASIK. Okay. Helping you navigate the decision-making process with confidence. Sounds good. Welcome back to our deep dive into LASIK surgery. Back for more. We've been unpacking like what LASIK actually does, who might be a good candidate and like some of the things you need to think about right. before even considering the procedure. You know, it's fascinating how many factors actually come into play. Yeah. It's not just about wanting better vision. Right. It's about your overall health. Uh-huh. Your lifestyle. Yeah. And really understanding those long-term implications. For sure. And that's why we're taking the time to, like, explore this thoroughly. Right. Giving you the tools to make the best choice for you. Totally. Speaking of long-term implications, mm -hmm. that's something I'm really curious about. Yeah. What do we actually know about how ILSIC holds up over time? Well, that's where things get a little tricky. Oh, really? The Mayo Clinic points out that long-term data on LASIK outcomes isn't always easy to come by. That's surprising, you'd think, with such a popular procedure. You would. We'd have tons of data on the long-term effects. Right, you'd think so. But part of it is that people who are happy with their LSIC results, mm -hmm. they often don't go back for regular checkups. Oh, that makes sense. They're out there enjoying their new clear vision. Right. So it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. If it's not bothering them, they don't feel the need to go back to the doctor. Exactly. Okay. And I guess LASIK technology and techniques are always advancing too. They are constantly changing. So it's hard to compare results from like different time periods. Right. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But even with those limitations, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about the general outlook for people who have LASIK? So the good news is that like most people experience good to excellent vision. Okay. For many years, even decades after LASIK. Wow. Imagine waking up and actually seeing the alarm clock huh. without having to like reach for your glasses. Okay, now that's a dream I can get behind. Right. Think of all the things you could enjoy without worrying about 
contacts or glasses, yeah, yeah. swimming, playing sports, right? even just going for a walk on a foggy morning without your vision being blurred. All right, you're really selling me on this. But it's not like a permanent fix. Yeah. Right. Ah. We've talked about how our eyes naturally change as we age. That's an important point. Yeah. As we get older, some degree of vision correction mm -hmm. might become necessary again even after LASIK. Right. And like we discussed earlier, LASIK can actually like speed up the need for reading glasses. Yeah. Especially for people who are nearsighted. Right. Exactly. And for some people, there's the possibility of regression. Uh huh where their vision slowly starts to worsen over time. It happens. It's not a major issue for most, but it's something to at least keep in mind. It's definitely a possibility. So realistic expectations are key. Absolutely. It's about understanding that LASIK is a procedure with potential benefits and risks. Right. Not like a miracle cure. Exactly. And it's important to remember that those impressive success rates you often hear about, Yeah. they're usually based on measurements taken under ideal conditions. What do you mean by ideal conditions? Like think about taking an eye exam in a brightly lit room. Your vision might be great in that setting, right? but it could be totally different in dimmer light, uh -huh. like driving at dusk or in foggy weather. Yeah. Those published results might not reflect how your vision actually performs in those situations. So those like glowing testimonials we see online might not tell the whole story? Exactly. That's why like having an open and honest conversation with your doctor is crucial. Makes sense. You need to discuss like your vision goals, mm. your lifestyle, and any concerns you have. Right. So they can give you a realistic picture of what a LASIK can and can't do for you. Right. It's all about finding the right fit for your individual needs and expectations. Mm, for sure. Now, speaking of which, yeah. let's circle back to the importance of choosing the right surgeon. So beyond talking to our regular eye doctor or asking friends for recommendations, mm. what should we be looking for in a LASIK surgeon? I think experience is absolutely key. Okay. You want someone who has performed a significant number of LASIK procedures. Right. And has a strong track record of success. So don't be shy about asking potential surgeons about their experience. Absolutely not. Ask about their experience with your specific type of vision problem. Okay. Their complication rates and their approach to post-operative care. Mm -hmm. A good surgeon will be open and willing to answer your questions thoroughly. Yeah, it's like any important relationship. Right. You need to feel comfortable and confident yeah. with the person you're entrusting with your health. Right. Especially something as precious as your vision. Exactly. Choosing a right surgeon can truly make all the difference in your LASIK journey. I think that's great advice. Okay. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. From the science behind LASIK uh -huh. to the potential benefits and risks. Yeah. And even some surprising considerations like the nearsightedness advantage. I know, right? That one's crazy. It really is. We've also highlighted the importance of finding a qualified surgeon. Yes. And setting realistic expectations. Absolutely. And before we move on, mm -hmm. I want to take a moment to address our listener directly. Okay. This deep dive is all about giving you the information you need. Yes. To decide if LASIK is the right path for you. Ultimately, the choice is yours. And here's something we haven't like fully explored yet. Okay. Those long-term LASIK outcomes that are sometimes hard to find. Right. As we mentioned, many people who are happy with their results don't go back for follow-up appointments. That's true. So as you weigh your options, think about this. Okay. How much does that lack of long-term data factor into your decision? It's a really thought-provoking question. It is. It makes you realize that there's a certain level of uncertainty involved, mm -hmm. even with a procedure as common as LASIK. Yeah, and that's perfectly okay. Right. It's all part of the process of making an informed decision. Totally. Well, on that note, we'll wrap up part two of our LASIK deep dive. Sounds good. But we're not done yet. Nope. There's still more to explore, Yeah. including some practical advice on navigating the decision-making process mm. and what to expect if you do decide to move forward with LASIK. Right. So stay tuned for part three. Yes. Where we'll wrap up our LASIK journey. Okay. And equip you with all the knowledge you need to make the best choice for your vision and your future. Awesome. All right. Welcome back to the deep dive. We're back. We've been on quite a journey exploring LASIK. Yeah. A deep dive for sure. Haven't we? And all this has been about giving you, our listener, 
the knowledge to decide mm -hmm. if LASIK is right for you. Right, because at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. Yeah. Based on your own situation, Ghibli. what you're comfortable with, and how much risk you're willing to take. Exactly. And before we wrap up this deep dive, I want to circle back to something wow. we've touched on a few times. Mm -hmm. That importance of realistic expectations. Oh, yes. It's easy to get caught up in that idea of like ditching glasses or contacts forever. Right. Yeah. But we have to remember that LASIK isn't a magical solution for everyone. Yeah, it's surgery after all. And with any surgery right. come potential benefits and risks. Exactly. And while many people do get fantastic vision after LASIK, mm -hmm. the outcome depends on a lot of things. Yeah. Your starting vision, how healthy your eyes are, right. even how well your body heals. So what can people do to like make sure they're going into this with realistic expectations? I think the biggest thing is to talk openly and honestly with your surgeon. Okay. Tell them what you're hoping to achieve, yeah. what your lifestyle is, like any worries you have. Yeah. Don't hold back. This is your vision we're talking about. Yeah. Asking questions is super important. Absolutely. Ask them about their experience with your type of vision problem, Okay. what their complication rates are, mm -hmm. and what you can realistically expect in terms of like Proud how you. well you'll see after LASIK. And remember, LASIK doesn't always mean saying goodbye to glasses completely. That's true for some activities like night driving or reading. You might still need glasses, Yeah. especially as you get older. And we talked about how LASIK can sometimes mean needing reading glasses sooner right if you were originally nearsighted exactly it's all about understanding the trade-offs right and making a choice that fits with what matters most to you i like that another thing to keep in mind is that yeah. lasik technology is constantly evolving oh yeah what's considered cutting edge today might be old news in a few years so it's good to do your research and stay informed right. about the latest advancements but don't get too caught up in chasing the newest thing right the best approach is to find a surgeon you trust yeah. who uses techniques that have a solid track record of success. And someone who's dedicated to giving you personalized care. Yeah! And addressing your specific needs. Absolutely. Well, I think we've covered just about everything there is to know about LASIK surgery. Yeah. We've explored it from all angles. For sure. And as always, our goal was to give you, our listener, the knowledge. Yeah. You need to make this complex decision. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to LASIK. Right. It's a personal choice that should be made carefully. Yeah. And with guidance from a qualified eye care professional. And if you're still on the fence after all this, don't feel pressured to rush into anything. No, take your time, do more research, mm -hmm. and make the choice that feels right for you. Totally. Well, on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Sounds good. Into LASIK surgery. We hope you found it informative and helpful mm -hmm. in navigating this big decision. It's a big one. It is. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Yeah. Into the world of LASIK. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive. Okay. Where we'll be tackling another fascinating topic and diving deep. Sounds fun. Into the knowledge that matters most to you. Until then, stay curious and keep those questions coming.